Thank you for joining us for devotions today. So as we look at Luther's explanation of the second article of the Apostles' Creed, immediately we recognize that after we acknowledge the faith that we have received with words, I believe, Luther directs our attention to the object of our faith, Jesus Christ. He directs us, as Oswald Bayer recognizes, to Jesus as the giver of our faith with these words, Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. You see, Luther really wants us to see that this Jesus, our Lord, is both true God and also true man. He is fully human and yet fully divine. And this is an incredibly important point because there is always part of our human mind that wants to understand the relationship between the two natures of Christ. How can someone be both God and man at the same time? Does this mean that God died on the cross? Does this mean that God is limited to his human nature? There are some theologians who have been brave enough to try and explain the relationship between these two natures of Christ. For example, some have taught that Jesus only seemed to have a human body, but this really was just a mirage. He was fully God that just kind of looked like a man. Some have taught that it is best to understand the two natures of Christ as, as two boards that have been glued together. He was, in essence, two separate natures that were completely distinct. While you can't separate the two distinguishable parts, you can see the difference between them. Some have taught that Jesus is kind of like a blender. You put a little human nature in there, and you put a little divine nature, you turn on the blender, and out comes blended Jesus. All the parts are there, but you can't really distinguish between one from the other. Now, others still have taught that Jesus is really just a special creation of God, really at the beginning of time. Or some have taught that God adopted Jesus to be his son. Unfortunately, the list goes on, but you get the idea. Now, we in the church have a name for all of these teachers. Heretics. You see, each one of these explanations ends up undermining the true identity of Jesus. And when you undermine either his status as fully God or his status as fully human, you ultimately end up undermining the salvation that has been brought to humanity. For example, if Jesus was not fully human, then you limit the salvation of Christ to strictly the areas that the divine did embody. So as we enter into this discussion, just stick with the fact that Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. And praise God that his divinity brought salvation to all of humanity. I would invite you to please pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity and true man, born of the Virgin Mary, you have redeemed us lost and condemned persons. We give you thanks for purchasing and winning us from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with your holy precious blood and your innocent suffering and death. We praise you that you have made us your own so that we may live under you and your kingdom and serve you in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as you are risen from the dead and live and reign to all eternity with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.